except for Thanksgiving, everybody has to have pumpkin pie. But at my house, my mother used to make a pumpkin banana mousse tart, which was actually really good. So I'm doing a version of that. It's kind of like pumpkin pie with the volume turned up. And the good news is it starts with a graham cracker crust. So 14 graham crackers, all ground up. It's about two cups of graham cracker crumbs. Third of a cup of sugar. And I put a little bit of cinnamon in. I just think it gives it nice pumpkin pie spice. Lots of flavor. Big on flavor. And the last thing, of course, is butter. So it's one stick of melted butter. I'm just going to mix it all together. So later I'm going to fill this with a pumpkin mousse that's flavored with a little bit of banana, which makes it wonderfully sweet, and some orange zest, and lots of spices. It's really good. Into an 11 inch tart shell. Clean hands, always a cook's best tool. So just pat it out so it's even. And then I take a cup measure, metal cup measure, and do the edge, just like that. And then you don't end up with a thick crust right at the edge. So much easier than traditional pie crust. So into the oven, 350 degrees for about 10 minutes until it's just a little firmer than it is now. Now we get to make the good part, the pumpkin banana mousse filling. So the first thing is half a cup of half and half. And I'm gonna put it into a double boiler. I know every starter set of pots comes with a double boiler, which is two pots, one on top of the other. But you can really make your own double boiler by putting a heat proof bowl directly over a pot. And then you can have all different sizes. And the next thing is one 15 ounce can of pumpkin puree. I've done this with cooking a pumpkin and pureeing it, or a can of pumpkin puree. And believe me, you can't tell the difference. And I can tell you which one's easier. OK, so that's in. Next ingredient is one cup of brown sugar. And you want this sort of lightly packed. It's how brown sugar is generally measured. Right into the pumpkin. And then some good spices. Three quarters of a teaspoon of salt. half a teaspoon of cinnamon, and a quarter of a teaspoon of nutmeg. Big wooden spoon, and just stir it around. So I'm gonna cook this for about five minutes until it just gets warm, and then I'm gonna add egg yolks to it to make a custard. But I think the tart shell is ready to come out of the oven. Perfect. It's just a little brown around the edges, and it's just going to cool and get firm. So now I'm going to make the custard. So I've got two egg yolks, and what I want to do is I want to warm up the egg yolks a little bit with a pumpkin mixture so I don't end up with scrambled eggs. Just like making a traditional custard. And then pour the whole thing back into the hot pumpkin mixture. See a nice scraper. Just want to get all of it. And just mix that up. And just cook that for about four or five minutes. So it's going to go into that tart shell. It's going to cool overnight if you want to. You can make it the day before. And then I'm going to decorate it with whipped cream. So it's not only delicious, but it's really gorgeous. So I'm going to take one package of gelatin. And just soften it in a quarter of a cup of cold water. When it's chilled, the egg yolks are going to help the mousse to set, but the gelatin's going to help it too. OK, off the heat. I'm just going to add these other ingredients. Mashed bananas. And softened gelatin. And the last thing is orange zest. Okay, I'm just going to stir this up. 
So while that cools, I'm going to whip the cream. I need about a half a cup of heavy cream, and then I'm going to use more for decoration later. And two tablespoons of sugar. Okay, that should do it. You can do this with a hand mixer if you want to also. Okay, that's perfect. With whipped cream, you want to make sure that it's really firm, like that, that it stands up. But if you get it too far, you end up with butter. Don't want that. Okay. All right, I'm going to fold this into the pumpkin mixture. So put the whipped cream right in the middle. And then with the spatula, I use a rubber spatula, just go straight down through the middle and then fold it over that way. Straight down through the middle and then right to the bottom of the bowl and then fold it over. Just keep doing that until it's really well mixed. Mm, this is looking gorgeous. Perfect. And pour it right into the graham cracker crust. Smells great. And the good news about this is you can make it in advance. Leave it in the fridge for a day and then decorate it just before you're going to serve it. Now comes the fun part, decorating the pumpkin banana mousse tart. It sat in the refrigerator until it just sat. And then I'm going to decorate it with whipped cream. Looks pretty good so far. So I need a cup of heavy cream. A quarter of a cup of sugar, and a splash of vanilla. When I say a splash of vanilla, I mean maybe a quarter of a half a teaspoon. I'm just going to whip it until it's firm. That looks good. I want it really nice and firm, but not turned into butter. And that's about right. Great. So the easiest way to decorate this, and it's perfectly great, is to do whipped cream around the middle, leaving a little border of pumpkin, sort of like meringue on the top. But I love to pipe it, so I'll show you how to do that. So take a pastry bag with a big star tip on it. I think that's the nicest one and the easiest. You know, piping looks really mysterious, but the way I learned how to do it is I just spend a day piping buttercream or whipped cream. Just practice, and you'll get it. And the best way to practice is just on a board or on the marble. So, because you can keep using it over and over again. So I'll show you. If you wanted to do a shell pattern, which is what I like to do, just a little bit like that, just like that. And it's really about the pressure in the bag and really getting a feel for it. It's not that hard. If you want to do something even simpler, it's just stars. But I think for this one, I'm going to do the shell pattern. So just all the way around. Just do like a ribbon pattern. And the good news is, if you make a mistake, you can just scoop it back into the bag and do it again. How hard is that? Okay, and then maybe a little swirl in the middle. Great. And then, because I like the decoration to be the flavors that are in the tart, I thought it would be really nice to decorate with a little bit of orange, maybe some orange zest. The traditional thing that I use for orange zest is this zester, but you'll see it ends up very fine. And I think I have a better way to decorate. See, it's really too fine. But then the other zester is this little wonderful tool that just has little sharp edges. And I'll show you what it does with the orange. It has long strips of zest. And I think that would be really pretty to decorate the tart with. And then just take it and put it around the edge, just sort of lightly. So now somebody knows it's pumpkin and orange and cream and delicious. And it's ready for dessert. I'm just going to keep it in the refrigerator until we're ready to serve it. I think that's not bad. <laughs>